So it's a beautiful day. It's beautiful. Here at the Redgrave and Pinson Lake, just before the World Championships. And we are here in the company of... Anna Watkins, Atom Granger. Now, Anna, um, you've obviously been lumped with a fairly junior partner who's not done an awful lot in, in rowing. Perhaps you ought to explain who your illustrious partner is. Well, yeah, Catherine's, a, as you say, she's a bit of a novice. She's only done, um, she's only done three Olympic Games winning a medal of each, and she's been... Silver medal, I believe. Yes. Yes. And um, world champion, is it five times? Oh, wow. Four or five? Yeah. So hey, who's counting? Count. Who's yeah. counting? But um, she's, she's not ever competed at the world championships in the women's double, which is the event we're going to be doing this year. So we're going to try and com an complete the set. <laughs> and you must be quite happy having the, the, as I say, the grand dame of no, British women, but that makes you sound really no. old, doesn't it? No, so we won't joking. say that, but let's say you must be very she's, pleased. I would call her the uh, Steve Redgrave of women's rowing, actually. Right. She's definitely the, she's the most successful British um, female rower that's ever been. <laughs> and uh, uh, Catherine, the Steve Redgrave of women's rowing, <laughs> your new partner, what do you think? Oh, she's brilliant. She is, in all seriousness, she is uh, actually the doubles expert. Um, she's been in doubles since 2005, um, and the results are, are quite exciting because you've come fifth, fourth, third, and second. Hey, hey there's, a bit like of, the pattern? there's a bit of a pattern here, isn't there? Um, yeah, and you know, what I find is quite incredible is that I haven't rode with Anna before now because she's been on the team since 2005, and ever since she she's sort of come on the scene has, has done sort of phenomenal results. And, well, yeah. you pretty much rode with everybody on the team, so there's only Anna left, wasn't there? Well, if you stick around long enough, <laughs> in fact, they all start retiring. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, you'll be next. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, you know, it's incredible we haven't rode together before now because she had know. to get to the bottom of the barrel sometime. <laughs> yeah, when there was no one else left. <laughs> but, um, listen, I tried I, my I, single last year, you know, I even you tried did. that, yeah? Um, yeah. but then I thought, okay, fine, I'll roll with you. <laughs> so how do you two, you obviously get on, but it, it, I mean, it's a pretty intense partnership uh, being being a double, and uh, you know, it's lovely in the sun shining, you're having a laugh, but you know, there'll be times when one of you needs picking up, or the other, or both. I mean, how does that work? It is an intense relationship, isn't it, being a double? Yeah, I mean, the rowers have always talked about that. And, you know, any boat class is, is intense because you're sort of physically in this very small environment together and we spend a lot of time abroad and we spend a lot of time in each other's pockets. And in a doubler or a pair is, in a way, the toughest because there there's nowhere... You know, it is the two of you completely dependent on each other and there's almost nowhere else to stretch the, the, the stress or when the pressure comes on, if there's a bigger boat, it kind of gets a bit separated. Um, but I have to say, you know, so far, we, it, it's helped with a very, very successful season so far. It's been a lot of fun to do. Um, I think we're, we're still at the stage where we're learning lots about each other and about the boat. Um, it's very exciting. It's, it's got so much potential, the boat. So um, we, we haven't really done any days where it's been bad. No, not really. I mean, I'm sure it'll come and actually it'll probably be good for us when it does because then you kind of know you can you can survive anything. Now, um, you've uh, it's 2010 obviously, it's two years before a certain Olympic Games, but is the plan, even at this stage, to be you two for, for London? Is that what you're hoping? There's never really a reliable plan in that aspect. It's generally based on performance, so, you know, if we keep winning, then the odds are that they'll keep us together. You know, it's all about deciding on the best potential for the results come 2012. Well, Anna, I was speaking to Kathy in, in 2000, just before the Olympics, and she said that she had this master plan, which was to toy with the sporting world and pick up silvers <laughs> for the next three Olympics, and then, then get the big one uh, at home in, in London. So it's all going to plan. Like yeah, plan. absolutely, absolutely on track there. I'm going to use that. Like that. <laughs> um, yeah, the, we've had a we've had a cracking season and no one's got in front of us yet and we just have to see how long we can keep that, that going for because if we can then um london's just going to be incredible yeah, but i mean joking apart uh to uh, i mean you know uh, people have gone on and on about this is kath and obviously what you've achieved is as anna says quite rightly absolutely fantastic but i mean to win any olympic gold medal is is, is pretty handy but to do it at the 2012 Games, so if you had to win one in, in all the Olympics that you've competed in, this would be the one, wouldn't it? It would, to be fair. You know, if, if I had the choice of just getting one chance to get one medal um, out of the four games 
I'd hopefully go to, then it would be London, of course it would be, you know, the home Olympics. It's the, to me, the home crowd, it's going to be the most incredible sporting event we've had in this country in, in sort of decades. And uh, it is, it's the fairy tale ending. Now, before then, uh, Anna, you've got the World Championships, obviously, that's why you're here. Um, and how, obviously, the World Championships are the World Championships, you ought to be world champions. Um, but it's also, a, I guess, a stepping stone, and it's also, you know, you ought to lay down markers, don't you, every, every time, every possibility you get to say, we're the best, you've got to beat us. Well, absolutely, and, you know, not to get ahead of ourselves, or myself, I've not won a World Championship yet, so um, that would be a very good stepping stone to London for us. Well, you've done everything else, you might as well win it now. <laughs> so, well, you know, as, um, as it's been such a long gap between the early races and the sort of championships, it's going to be a bit of... A few surprises, but a variation in form. So we won't really know until we start racing heats, um, what everyone else is doing. But we, we're confident in our speed and that we've got more speed that we can find. So um, I do know that we're going to go and, and give it everything we've got and, and enjoy racing, which is something we really do in, in this double. And um, you know, see who's see who's going to. Uh, who's going to give us a good race, really. And Anna, as, as you well know, if, if all the opposing crews, every single member of all the opposing crews, were found battered to death in New Zealand, <laughs> luckily, <laughs> luckily, we have a criminologist here <laughs> who can not only become world champion, but also investigate. Yeah, and she'd know why. They did all that. I think who we ought to explain. Who do you think might have killed all those people? <laughs> all the crews? Well, it could be Anna. And you could be. Actually, she's got a dark side. Isn't there somebody who's investigating the link between psychopaths and sports people? Yes. We will to explain. This, <laughs> this, sound, this sounds a bit in jokey to the good viewers of Sports Five. Kath, please explain what I'm going on about. Oh, God. Okay, well, I, uh, in my spare time, um, study for a PhD. And, and still studying for a PhD. Still, so I have done for a, for a number of years now, which is why it's an ongoing joke. Um, but it is in homicide. And. Uh, there are links. I, I began looking at it because I was looking at psychopaths. I was studying psychopaths um, in the criminal law. And I've now moved on to actually people murdering other people. So it's my ongoing studying and it's, it is hard to combine with a full-time career in sport. Um, so, you know, ideally, if there were people murdered around me, it might make things go a bit quicker because I could then follow the... The process is happening. And, yeah. and the next question yeah. is, when you do have a big fallout, okay, most people just maybe, I don't know, walk away, but she knows, she knows the sort of things she that go on. Yeah, she's got way too much information. Perfect. Murder. Murder. She knows exactly, yeah. They would never find the body. No. It's, it, it's quite terrifying. I, I just have to keep rowing fast and hope that, you know. When I said all my previous partners I've rowed the rowing have retired. Well, they've disappeared, haven't they? Yeah. Yes, yes they have. Some, they? some have gone abroad and never come back. Yes, yes. Didn't want one sort of cloves found on a beach and... I, I can comment. Yeah, okay. Well, Anna, good luck. I mean, just in living, frankly. Thanks. Um, and, uh, and good luck in New Zealand, more, more to the point. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, you're going there as, 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 as big favourites. And I guess last word with um, our homicidal psychopath. Um, <laughs> Yes. Kath, what, I mean, you know, what, why are you still doing it? It's because the hunger's still there, you still enjoy it, there's nothing better to do. I'm talking about the rowing rather than the homicide. I'm talking about the rowing. Okay. Uh, I love it. I'm absolutely loving it, probably more than I have done. Uh, I, still, I still get really excited by it. I still love the challenge that it brings. Um, I, yeah, I, I would, you know, I, I can't imagine anything else. I love it. Oh.